welcome to my um, talk about um, neural manager. Um, there have been neural manager talks in the past. I think they were all done by Matt, who was the uh, original author of, of Mirror. Yeah. Who, who wrote it many years ago. Yeah, I, I even looked it up in, in, in Git so I can I can tell it <laughs> when when it first started. Um, my my idea behind this presentation is to, to give a status what's currently available, what especially Pierre changed in the last year or the last two years and what's currently running and maybe get a discussion going what we can do to, to make it better because it has still some um, problems. Um, so, so something about, about me, um, I'm actually, I have a mirror of Red Hat Linux since 1998, so I'm a long time mirror admin and it's also how I got into Mirror Manager, I'm, I'm maintaining also the Mirror Manager instance for RPM Fusion. So if you download anything from there, it will hit one of my systems. And <coughs> this I'm, I'm, all, all, I'm all doing this all in my um, my part time, uh, free time. I don't know. Um, I'm I'm working on something differently, not Python code and not web code. Um, the, what I want to talk about is I want to give an overview about what neural manager is. There are different terms and words and, and what they what they mean. Then what currently is running? What is neural manager two? Um, how it is used by the clients or and by everybody who is downloading any updates. Then I will um, point out a few. Um, Known problems we currently have and, and see, and then I hope we can have some ideas how we can improve it in the future. <coughs> What's Neural Manager? Neural Manager is basically a, only a tool to redirect a user to the best possible mirror for, for that user in his current with, with his current IP address. <coughs> And, and what is the best mirror? We define the best mirror as the closest mirror because the probability is high that this might be the best mirror. And the closest mirror, we, um, we try to find out. First, we try to match it if it's the same continent, if it's on, on some research network which might have a better connectivity. Then if it's the same country, we try to match up um, autonomous systems and if the mirror admin um, added um, net blocks which he believes his mirror should be um, um, responsible for then we will redirect the user to, to that um, to that network <coughs> um, some of the features which um, mirror, mirror manager has um, it supports partial mirror, so if somebody wants only to mirror certain releases of Fedora or certain architectures, Mirror Manager can, can handle this. Um, we support multiple categories, so we have Fedora Linux and Apple um, are different categories. We have Fedora Archive, Fedora Secondary and Fedora Out. Those are the current categories we are um, providing. Yes. I don't know. Atomic has been has disappeared, luckily, uh, because it it was really bad for Mirror Manager's design. I don't know where it went. I don't so know. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's the same as server now. It's not mirrored. Oh, okay, yeah. Because it, it has no mirror support. Yeah. Yeah. OS3 is not mirrored yet. So. Yeah, I, I wanted to mention it later. It's um, it's. I think it was for three releases, it was about 700,000 files. Yeah. And Mirror Manager crawled all of them each time, and this took forever. This was, was one of the points where, where it really broke the performance, if, if you can say so, performance, and where it really broke a lot of mirrors because um, the crawler was not anymore able to, to get the content from the mirrors. 
And what's what's unique with Mirror Manager, which uh, which no other Mirror managing solution provides, at least what I've seen, is private Mirror. So an organization can say we want to provide a Mirror for our users, but nobody else from the outside should be able to access it. And if the Mirror is detectable by a host name or an IP, Mirror Manager can then um, redirect those users coming from this IP to this certain mirror and nobody else. And, and what's also unique is, is the self-service web interface. I'm, I'm not every time sure it's a good idea because um, it gives the mirror admins a lot of flexibility because they can configure it all on their own. They don't have to write emails and say, please at this net block, please at this ASN in this country do you want to block this and that? So they can do all this on their own, but they usually sometimes need some help to get it um, configured correctly. So this has um, advantages and disadvantages. I know that Mirror Manager is used by the Fedora project in RPM Fusion. There were a few attempts to get CentOS running in Mirror Manager, but they didn't like it, they didn't have time. I, I don't know it. There were initial discussions, but it never went further. There was a solution support for Ubuntu in the Mirror Yeah, there's some code for Ubuntu, uh, but I don't know um, what's I the... the <coughs> there are other um, Mirror managing solutions which, which do exist. Um, it's, it's Mirror Bits. It's, it's used by, by Videolan and SuperRepo. Your brain is, is um, something which a lot of um, projects are actually using. Um, I've seen it it's, it's, it's de was developed by, by Suze and they are using it and a few others. <coughs> um, Debian has just, um, I think two years ago, introduced uh, uh, something Similar, it's also, it works on, on HTTP redirect, I think. Mm -hmm. And then there is um, Mirror which only checks a single file, so they only check if the timestamp file is up to date, and if it's up to date, then the mirror is up to date. Mirror Manager always scans the whole mirror to make sure all the files, or almost all the files are up to date, and, that only, and not only the timestamp file. And, and it seems, Every project has their own mirror managing um, framework to, um, to somehow deal with it. Um, about um, mirror manager's history, looking at, 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 at the git log of the old code, um, it was started in January 2007. <coughs> And this is also uh, sometimes important to remember when working with the code base, even if it's now rewritten in something newer, it's, it, it makes different assumptions about mirror sizes and, um, and what time is required to scan a mirror because it was smaller when it was initially written. Um, <coughs> Fedora seems to use it since May 2007 when it was still pretty new. At least that was what I get from, from the GitLab from, from Puppet. So it seems to run the same time as it, almost the same time as it exists on, in the Fedora infrastructure. And the, um, the original Mirror Manager code base was um, Tobias 1. Point something base and porting this to something which would run on, on RAS 7, which was the targeted platform for, Fedor for the Fedora infrastructure um, required a rewrite of the code base in, in any case to something newer like Turbogears 2 or I don't know the version numbers or never released. Hmm? The Turbogears 2 never released. Oh, you know, it never released. So, um, so um, that's when um, Pierre uh, rewrote uh, Mirror Manage to Flask in 2014. I didn't report to Turbogears 2 before that. Huh? I didn't report to Turbogears 2 before that. Oh, yeah, so, <laughs> so he reported it to a lot of platforms. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
And yes, in, in, in spring 2015, it was um, actually um, moved into production systems um, for Fedora infrastructure. And I just, last month, I moved parts of RPM Fusion's Mirror Manager infrastructure also to um, Mirror Manager 2. The changes for, for Mirror Manager 2 were um, it's now Flask and SQL Alchemy based. Um, we made a few changes to the, to the, to, to the behavior. The, the crawler um, used to crawl all the mirrors every time, even if they took forever to, to crawl. We are now um, disabling mirrors which have four consecutive crawl failures. And um, we give a maximum time of three hours to crawl one mirror. So if after 48 hours a mirror was not reachable, we completely disable it to not um, waste our resources on scanning slow mirrors. Um, if it's automatically disabled, uh, the admin can, uh, the mirror admin of the mirror can re-enable it anytime he wants to. Um, but um, this um, this uh, disabled a lot of broken mirrors which were still active, still marked as active, but were not updated anymore. So this was again was something which which helped us to reduce the crawl times for all of the mirrors. But um, sometimes it seems um, that the, the limits we we have set are a bit too 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 high because sometimes mirrors get disabled too fast. So this might be a value which needs to be re-evaluated. <coughs> and the nice thing about the uh, new Mirror Manager 2 um, release was that um, the, 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 the systems which are giving out the mirror list and the meta links, um, they use the same data format as, as Mirror Manager 1, so we were able to update the mirror list servers independently of the, of the backend infrastructure. Um, I give uh, an overview view how all is connected in the, in the next, uh, next slide. We also recently disabled um, and removed all um, FTP links from, from the database. Um, the reason behind this was that um, FTP is usually difficult for some clients and is often um, reason to get problem with reports with, with a certain mirror. Um, the, the probability that the user would get an FTP link was already pretty low because if, if a mirror would provide HTTP and FTP, we would usually always um, give out the HTTP link. Um, but to make sure the, the remaining FTP, FTP servers are not given out to the clients, we removed all of them from, from the database and we even blocked uh, adding new FTP links to the database. Um, what's also new, we um, added support to, um, to specify that someone, someone only wants HTTPS mirrors. So <coughs> if you actually change your repo files manually, which you shouldn't, then you could um, um, say that you only want HTTPS mirrors. This is also something which we would expect to be handled by, by DNF directly, that it can um, say I am preferring um, HTTPS mirrors. And Mirror Manager does a lot of scanning of its master server and of all the clients, and we tried to um, get more intelligent by doing those scans, not cron-based anymore, but, but message-based anymore so in the, right now. So if we get a message that a new repo has been generated, or we get a message that the data has been synced out to the master mirror, then we uh, only then we scan the master mirror for changes. This is um, the, 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 the current architecture of, um, of Mirror Manager. We have um, one central system backend system um, which um, handles all of the data. Um, it, um, does the, it, it generates the data which is handled out of the mirror list. The mirror lists are, are the systems which the clients are actually talking to. So if you are running DNF or YAML, it's 
always only talking to, to those mirrorless systems, it's never talking to, to the other um, systems which, which also exist. exist. The backend system generates, generates the data, which, which is PKL generation. Um, this generates the data, which is then pushed out to the mirrors each hour. Um, the, the data includes which mirrors are available and up to date, which, uh, in which country, in which net block, in which ASM, uh, if they are on Internet 2 or research networks. And this uh, data is then pushed out to the mirrorless servers. They are restarted and then they um, start serving the new data out to the clients. The, the front end, um, there are currently three front ends running. This is the, the self-service interface for the, for the administrators of the mirrors where they can configure the mirror, um, the parts, the URLs, and, and everything else. And it's also the system where, um, <coughs> where we um, provide some statistics, what, what's, what's being downloaded. And the crawlers are the systems which are crawling all the existing mirrors, so they are connecting to each mirror and and scanning each mirror um, if they have up-to-date content. Um, the crawler works using either right now either HTTP or RSync. Um, we prefer RSync because um, with HTTP it can take up to one, two, three hours, and then it hits the limit already, and the mirror is disabled because. Depending on the configuration of the of the mirror, it, it can mean it, it actually opens a network connection for each file. We are we are hoping that um, mirror admins are configuring keep alive, so this reduces the number of, of HTTP uh, of TCP connections. But we still do a lot of um, HTTP connections, which is really not very efficient. And and with our sync, we see differences between scanning times between two hours with HTTP and housing takes ma maybe five minutes or something like this because it's we open one connection, get a complete list of all files and, and then we um, can process the, the, the file list uh, locally without needing to com communicate with the server anymore. Um, one thing I tried to, to improve which, which failed, um, I tried to um, and because the, the crawler right now is, um, there are two crawlers, they are both in the Fedora Infrastructure Data Center, which is in Phoenix, I think. So all the mirrors are crawled from Phoenix, which uh, this doesn't seem like the best idea if the mirror is on the other side of the world. So I had the idea that um, we could um, <coughs> crawl mirrors in Europe, for example, from Europe, and I implemented the filter in the crawler to, to um, crawl based on, on the continent and this all, all worked but once the example for, for if, if you're crawling with RSync, once the RSync file was downloaded and the crawler tries to um, compare it with the database, it reads the file information from the database which is still in Phoenix, then compares it with the value from the RSync, then updates the database, which is still in Phoenix, and so it was actually slower. So the, the scanning was faster, but the updating of the database was slower. So this didn't work out at all, and um, I think to, to make something like this work, um, the, the crawler needs to be changed completely, because right now it, it really needs an open database connection for each file, and in the optimal case it would have all the data from the database locally and could then update the information in, in one upload. Um, but this didn't work so far. I mentioned um, statistics from the from the front ends. Um, what Mirrorland is also doing is trying to um, <coughs> draw diagrams of the propagation of the, of the data. So the um, so the green bar is how many mirrors have the um, up-to-date repo and D XML file, the correct one, and the red bar is which mirrors have the repo and D from the last sync, and the blue is 
two things in red is even older. So we see um, this is, um, I think each bar is four hours apart. Yes, it's four hours. So we see once um, new data has been synced out to the master neural, um, we already have after about eight hours, um, almost 50% of the neurons have their current content, which I think is, is quite a good time and then it usually stabilizes um, pretty fast at a high level. I think the ones up there, the red ones, are always out of date because they are just broken. So um, this would need manual, manual interaction with the neural admin, so you need to talk to them and find out why it's broken. This is for uh, Fedora 22, this is old. This is um, from yesterday, from, from Rawhide. The <coughs> it's Rawhide is always difficult because it changes so fast, so we have um, the, the number of neurons in which are neural in Rawhide is already lower, so um, this is, um, and, and then the, the fast it changes. Um, but I, I saw yesterday that something is not working because everything is red and it should be violet and blue. So I think this, this number, the number of neurons is correct, but why all the others are wrong, I, I don't know right now. And this is from Fedora 24. We see um, longer cycles here um, between the updates and much higher number of um, updated mirrors. This, this means right now we have about 100 Fedora 24 mirrors worldwide which are work, which seem to be working from mirrors manager perspective and correctly. What takes so so much time? What was the bottleneck here? Why it takes so long to see? So the mirrors don't know when the new data is there. So they, they, a mirror usually they, they do a cron job every day, every 12 hours, every 4 hours. Right. So every 4 hours it really should be only a 4 hour lag, but then in Fedora tries to encourage mirrors to use a tiering system. We have um, a few mirrors which are called tier 1 mirrors. They are, they have direct access to the master mirrors and, and all other mirrors should see from them. So if, if we now have two mirrors which have a frequency of four hours, you already have eight hours difference um, to get them updated and... Yeah, and it takes forever to pop. Yeah, and that's the problem. Yeah, and it takes forever because um, it's, it's, it's a lot of data right now and, and the awesome run takes, I don't know, two or three hours to scan the master mirror. And the master mirror is basically not doing much more right now than making awesome client happy, uh, happy because everybody is, is, is trying to get the information from the master server and it has to walk the file system every time, every time, every time. And, and I think the, the file system of the master mirrors is shared via NFS overall. Oh, it's, it's from a NetApp. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, and the five master mirrors all see the same yeah. so. NetApp. So all it does is do stats all day long. Yeah. <laughs> and not only the, the clients are doing stats, but we are also stating the same data, um, which all right. I want to talk about later again. Mm -hmm. um, this is um, which pathways are connecting to the mirror manager. This is also from yesterday or two days ago. Um, this is this is all accesses which are coming to mirror manager um, without any filters over it. So if one IP does millions of accesses, it will also be be here. Um, countries we have architectures. This is pretty clear. Um, and this is repositories and slot paper and the active Fedora releases which can, can, can be seen here. <coughs> um, I mentioned that adding a mirror is um, sometimes the, the admins need, need some help. Um, and I wanted to show here um, that it's, it can be quite complicated to, to come to the point where you can actually add your, the URL for your mirror. So the first thing you have to do, you have to create a site. And then you can create in your site multiple hosts. And then in your hosts, you can create multiple categories. So host is basically your, your mirrors. If you have 
multiple rules that you can divide them there, and then the categories of the or Linux, the or secondary, either. And under each category, you can then add the URLs you're providing. And this is then the information the crawler and, and everything is else is using to, to build the, the final data, which is then pushed out to the, to the middle list service. I did a, um, a count um, of the database to see um, what we currently have um, in the database. So we have <coughs> 499 private neural sites. So this is sites which are marked mark private um, and not available for, for other uses. Then we have um, 383 public sites, um, which are marked as public and not private. The host, again, can be private or public again. I never really understood why the site and the host can be private, and they can be differently. But I guess if the site is private and the host is public, this doesn't work. So in, in any case, we have um, 486 private hosts and 305 public hosts. And overall, those hosts, we have 1,100 categories and 1,400 URLs added to our database and 929 URLs for HTTP. We have 125 HTTPS and 362 RC. This is what we currently have in our database and, and we look here from the uh, from the 300 hosts, there are 100 available for um, bit of 24, which are working. I didn't have a look at, at April. A lot of people are only mirroring April, so this is um, this doesn't come out here in, in those diagrams. It comes out here where you see that it's um, accessed a lot from the mirror list and metalling service. <coughs> So the, the front end, which the, the user or DNF or Young is using is, is Mirrorless and Metalink. It's mainly Metalink for Fedora. And um, uh, the, the URL looks something like the second line. It's Metalink and then you can uh, specify the repository, um, Rawhide or Fedora 24 or updates release 24 and then an architecture. And, and those additional parameters can be specified. You can, you can either can you specify the file that you want by um, by repository and architecture, or you can specify it by by providing the full path to the file, and then mirror manager will tell you a mirror um, to a mirror which has, has the file. Then you can um, you can for testing reasons. Um, I I often. Um, use um, country or map block or even I didn't list it here. You can also say IP. You can directly specify the IP um, um, which for which mirror, mirror manager should um, provide the, the meta link or mirror list. And this is um, helpful if somebody has a problem and you know the IP of the problem, then you can test it and see what the result is looking like and if it's actually wrong or uh, broken, uh, wrong or correct. And then there are version in CC, this is for the CentOS um, port, which was the standard one point, and then protocol if you want only a specific number of protocols listed enough, um, all of them. Yes? Can I remind me what's the difference between mirror list and meta? Okay. This is a mirror list and this is the meta link. So, so the mirror list is basically only you say um, you access this URL and then you get a list of, of possible mirrors for, for, for your request. And in this case it's, it's two mirrors. You also see what um, mirror manager understood, the repository, the architecture and the country. And this is a, a longer one, global, I said country global, you get all the available mirrors at this point in time, protocol HTTPS. Um, I, I turned it, it's, it's, it's much longer, but you, you get a list of, 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 of HTTPS mirrors. It's just a list of, 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 of mirrors. Each line has one mirror. Metalink is um, different. Um, <coughs> it's, an, it's an R file and it contains, I left out the interesting uh, stuff. 
and it contains um, information about the repo and the XML file, about its timestamp, about its checksums. It can contain up to three um, repo and D timestamps and checksums. And then later down here comes a list of possible mirrors. And then um, DNF can connect to one of those mirrors, which are down here, and download the repo MD file. And then it can see if the repo MD file matches the timestamp and the, the hash. And only if this works, um, DNF accepts the mirror as, as a possible client. So with mirrorless, you have no verification at all. It just goes to one of the mirrors, downloads the file. With Metalink, you have a verification if the file which is provided by the mirror is um, actually um, the same, the one Fedora told you to download. And it's providing three files in certain situations, and um, I will talk about this also later, um, to make sure if the mirror is not updated fast enough, you still get a... And, and the problem is the, the mirrors are scanned two times a day, and so the mirror can be up to date uh, or not, but we cannot scan it so often, this, this doesn't work. So we are providing multiple repo MD checksums so that if you connect to a mirror and the mirror still has all the data, you still have a working update, which is not always a desirable situation because you might miss some security updates, which why couldn't you scan more of them? It takes too long. Okay, so uh, why not do something to the DNF which will notify you of those failures? So you will get, you will constantly scan for free from the users. Oh, interesting point, yeah. Yeah, yeah good point. You did that, it doesn't. I, no, and, but, and then DNF reports back to Mirror Manager. That's uh, your idea, right? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, it's a nice idea. Yeah, sure, sure, yeah. We have, <laughs> we have, we have already multiple ways of getting informed and also talking about this later a bit more. Um, but yes, this, this, is, this, this is a good idea, but um, yeah, I'm usually only looking with the, only from the mirror manager point of, of things on it, so if it goes to DNS, I, I stop because it's gets too complicated for me. So this is the, the meta link. <coughs> What's next? So yeah, report mirror is, is another tool which um, we provide. And the idea behind report mirror is um, from the problem we right now have, we cannot um, scan the mirrors fast enough. We provide the mirrors a tool which they can run after the sync run to tell us that they are up to date. So they run Alsync, update the mirror, run report mirror, and they update our database that they are up to date, and in the next uh, generation of the data which is sent out to the mirrorless servers, this mirror is marked as up to date or not, depending on the values from, from report mirror. We actually need report mirror for private mirrors because we wouldn't have any chance to get information about the status mm -hmm. of, of private mirrors because we do not scan private mirrors because we probably can or we shouldn't. <coughs> uh -huh, I said this. Um, one of the problems um, a report mirror has, it only scans the directories. It doesn't scan the content. The crawler scans for the content in the directory, the report mirror doesn't. This um, goes to back to, it was written in 2007 and at that time it was not the idea of forcing all mirror admins to run a tool which stats again all of the files just after all things start, started all of the files seemed like a bad idea and people would probably not run it and so we so we pop mirror right now only checks if the directory is there, if the directory is there, we assume that the mirror actually is up to date and then we up to date it in the database. This leads to situations <coughs> yes. this leads to situations where um, if oh I, I wrote it here. Um, this, um, for example, if, if they didn't actually update their mirror because their all sync command is broken, but then they run report mirror, they have all the directories because they mm -hmm. run it 
successfully one month ago, there was no release. So then um, they run it, they say they have the Fedora 24 directory, then we believe them it's, it's up to date. Um, it happens sometimes that uh, the mirrors are actually flapping. They are, um, report mirror tells us my mirror is up to date, so it's enabled. And then the crawler comes over it and says, no, your mirror is not up to date, I'm disabling it. And this often leads to a situation where we get bug reports, people saying the mirror doesn't work. Then we say, then we test it and say, you shouldn't have been redirected or disabled, and but because there was a time difference between it. So this is this is already an existing problem, which um, <coughs> he might have a solution yeah. for. <laughs> if you will actually do want everything. You want the file sizes and times Probably, yes. back to you. Okay. Yeah. But you can't, the point is you can't trust the mirror to say, yep, I got it. Yes, this is this is the situation. Do we trust the mirrors or do don't? So some so we trust them somehow because they they serve our files. But and this is also the point where we say yes, if they run report mirror, it's it's good enough for us. This is this is one of one of one of those. Um, of course, if DNF was telling you that a mirror doesn't have it, no mirror doesn't have it. So that would be interesting. I don't know if you had instant feedback from the actual plant machines. Yes. Find yes. Yeah. Yeah. But so now you actually, and you don't do a statistical call, you do a full call, right? We crawl the 10 newest files. Oh, okay. That sucks. That's oh, but it still takes forever for our sync to be Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we, um, if we do a HTTP, HTTPD crawl, we only crawl the 10 newest files in each directory. I, I believe this is also code I never touched, but I've seen comments in the code saying this. Yeah, that'd be it. Yeah. So I, I can see somebody doing like patching DNF themselves and local branch to go with that and just like spewing thousands of nodes on AWS just to take down a mirror network of Well it cost them like forty bucks in yeah, the AWS. The only thing that you would do is perhaps report mirror would schedule at all of the same files and then notice that they're really there and they'll yeah, it would be a way to check and say the DNF feedback isn't the only metric. No, no, no. Yeah, then, but then at some point, like, uh, well, at what point are we ignoring that feedback? Um, However, the, the thing we could do is make the DNF feedback be negative only. Yeah. You can, you can only report that the error is not up to date. Yeah, but right. it's only going to report that all on Oh, yeah, so we can report that all on yeah. yeah, the following thousands is something yeah. that yeah. there is an upcoming mirror monitor that's allowed to add means to mock mirrors on all the ways of today. We may not really need it at all. So, so the worst case solution we are redirecting everyone to pass up here. Which is definitely not ideal. That is the worst case. It does mean that you will still, but I say, you will be the same data at the same time. We still should get up to the mirror. Yes, okay, it's just, just something about it. Yeah, right. But I think I'm always scared a bit about the whole mirror manager thing because you could probably bring down a lot if you just want to um, cause damage using the mirror manager network, something. Well, yeah, I don't know. You have the mirror's key in order to report. So the worst you can do is report bad data if you're already a real mirror and then disable yourself. Yeah, you can, but you, you could create a lot of raw mirrors and add them to database and... True. Yeah, so... But then they call once and get... But can the worst case is when I don't see the mirror necessarily... Yeah, that's the issue with my people in the last time. I mean, that's that would be the place where you would attack. Yeah. 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 Right, and we've noticed, I mean, we've had cases where people were like, why are the mirrors, you know, so under such heavy load, and we trace it back to like a provider who just rolled out, the blossom was so bad and just rolled out 10,000 subclass uh, instances with a wrong uh, echo of development or something like that. And so we had to like, we blocked his IP and then he actually showed up in IRC and said, so that was me, sorry about that. <laughs> it's well, like, I mean, I mean, it didn't take things down, but it just it added a bunch of load. Another problem I was recently struggling with was an Anycast mirror. Mm -hmm. and there was somebody who was trying to get 
and any customer will add it to, to uh, the memory manager network and I told him it, it would probably not work but he still tried it and and it they have nodes in, in, in LA, New York, in Rome and Romania and they added all of them to the to the neural manager and the crawler started crawling and it always because it's with Phoenix it always was crawling the node in Los Angeles of all of the systems. So um, this this doesn't work at all with our setup. So this it was nice for him to, to offer it but um, but I had to tell him he has, has to disable it. And but at some point, isn't it up to them to make sure that all of their errors are the same? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, okay, it would be nice, right? Um, so just out of curiosity, when you say they come to you, it was not in the admin Yes, it was in the it was this new admin mailing list, and that I was um, discussing it with him. Yeah, and he was was uh, and twelve mails or so. I was working with him, and, and at the end, I I said he, he he needs to disable all of them except the LA node because we will always hit the Los Angeles node he has. Um, the MetaLink alternates. We had problem with them also. There is um, what I said. We have up to three MetaLink up and. Um, Checksums in the no, we have up to three repo and D XML checksums in, in the meta link, <coughs> and they are removed after, after some time. We have two um, values which decide when the checksums will move. If it's over than three days, this is the easy one. This is understandable. And the second most recent entry is older than max propagation days, which is two. I forgot to write and. The nice thing is, it's, it's written wrongly, so it's really easy to find it in the code. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm over, where is this? And then I remember, oh, it's written wrong, I just have to grab for Coco. <laughs> and and so this, this works most of the time. We had a few occasions where it didn't work, and I'm not entirely sure why it didn't work. It, it could have been, I don't know if, if this could actually happen, that the repo MD file was on the master mirror available and then the sync or the repo generation didn't work and it was um, changed back to the old file and then the, the, the new file was already detected and, and the <coughs> checksum was in the database and after three days the old files were um, thrown out of the database, but the old file was still there because it was reverted somehow. So we have situations where we um, stumble over, over this, and um, but it's not really um, clear how and, and when it happens. From the code, it looks correct. From the idea, it's it's correct, um, but this sometimes happened, and then we have to force a rescan of the master mode. <coughs> Scan of the master mirror um, is done by update master directory listing tool, or we call it UMDL. Um, yeah, many it's it's uh, mentioned often, but nobody knows what what means UMDL. Um, in, in in the Fedora infrastructure, the, the the master mirror is NFS mounted, like we said previously, on on, on the backend machine. When we get a message from the um, Fedora message bus, we start crawling the um, master mirror NFS. We do a lot of stuff again. We check each um, C time of each directory to see if it has actually changed. If it has changed, we go into the directory, read out the repo and the XML, make the checksums, and write it to the database. And it's, it's really highly inefficient at one point of time when we were waiting for a new repo to be generated really fast because something went wrong. I was looking um, in the tool with s and it does so many stuff, it's unbelievable. And, and so this, this tool really needs to be rewritten and there exists even a rewrite from Care, but we didn't put it yet in production because we're afraid it breaks everything. <laughs> And this is, this is something we, we cannot really test in staging because we never know if data is... It, it will always seem probably correct, but we never know if it's actually correct. And, and the problem behind this is that 
we need to know the information about all the files um, which we are pushing out to the mirrors to be able to redirect the mirrors to the files correctly. And this information exists probably already in some database or in some other place. It's sitting in a file in every... Yes, and this is also the work um, we were doing with um, Pixador yeah. Mirror. And this is also the point where we need to be much more intelligent how we scan the master mirror and probably also the, the existing mirrors. Yeah, I don't know how the two interface. I don't know how. Not at all. Uh, okay. I, I don't know how mirror manager interfaces with the, the masters except by, I guess, NFS mounting it. Yes, yes, yeah. It's a I mean, you could just read the files off. I mean, because that's all, that's all done in another process, <coughs> which does that. But it only takes, what? How long does it take to update archive? That's the big one. What, 11 minutes? Yeah. yeah. And you only have to do it when it changes, so. 11 minutes to, to, to rescan the entire thing when archive changes is, doesn't take very long. So it's really not. And we have this all in a database. It's in mm. textual format, but it's easy to. Yeah, I think this was also the, um, the initial uh, version from Pierre with this updated version he was using. We were, we were using the file, full file list or something like this. Yeah, we we think of it that the, the full file list is mm -hmm. in my part. There's, there's full file time list dash uh, modeling and it's there. The, the, the full file, the full file list of one file was just as slow as the present file. Because the, the, the new UMDL is multi uh, thread so I could actually read the entire tree, different mm -hmm. part of the, the tree, using different thread at the same time, while reading the file and then we... But, one I mean, but the, the times are updated, so the times are really yeah, one minute. Only one minute? Yeah. Okay. yeah we're out. <coughs> so I did a bit of a fun one time, I never went from the training version, but it's a bit safe sometimes. We have gone from one hour to talking at the next week, it was really quite a bit faster. But it's with, with the new format, in the whole part of time, it's machine learning like that. Yeah, you, you have the. You can, go, you can only look for what changes in the I Yeah, I could. Uh, I think we do the the shard the shard files, but then they can get the list of files quicker. That's the easiest way to get the shard files. Yeah. Did you mention? Did you mention? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, really. No. So we actually have. Um, I've been working on this whole thing. All it does is eliminates uh, what? I mean, half a billion stacks from. The, the server side, every time a client connects to one of the master mirrors and tries to see what updated, basically seems intelligent instead of our sync on the server scanning every damn time um, the entire file tree, just read database and then make assumptions that the database is accurate. Um, the problem is we don't really want to hack our sync. Um, and rewrite it. So instead, it's completely possible to, to separately generate a database and then have the client simply download that and see if you can catch it. And it's actually very easy. So you turn, um, there's 11, there's, there's 10 or 11 terabytes now on the full archive. It takes some, if the server is loaded, it takes about 12 hours to just parsing over that to get the file list before you start transferring it. Um, instead, if you just read the database and see if there's any changes, it takes you about four seconds. Um, so and then, then have an API and there an API that you can talk to. Right, I saw that, except it's not complete and it didn't look like it worked. So instead, we just download the file that I just, and this is a shell script. It's very easy. Unfortunately, it's written in Z shell. Um, pulling it to batch would be a real pain because if we want to run on L5, we can work it back through Whereas ZSH will run on L5 with no problem, so I can see it's like, But it's just a shell script. It needs nothing but rsync and set it off. Um, it does everything up to and including report error, except that I don't have an endpoint that I can call, um, which there's a pull request for that in, in Git. Um, so it, and it's, I don't know, it needs CURL to, to do the, the checking point. Otherwise, it runs very quickly. It, when it does find files that change, it does run our with a big file list, and it does require a stack only for one each 
exchange file. Mm -hmm. Only one staff for exchange file on the server. Um, and you can pull it every 10 minutes or quicker. Um, which means, and it works for subsidiary mirrors as well. So if you, the, two, the tier one mirror is pulled, the tier two mirrors can pull from that as long as the, the tier one mirrors don't change the file list. Everything actually works. Um, and so if everybody was pulling every 10 minutes, it doesn't stop you, it doesn't save you from transferring anything because you still got to have the manual. But it does save you a ton of stats and it saves a lot of the master mirrors, which means you can do more on master mirrors. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you have to run it on your mirrors, which is the problem. But we're running it successfully for the, I did do earlier, and of course I've got a tree of mirrors that I run it on. Um, and I run a full, I run a full all 11 terabytes across three mirrors. Um, and it takes, like I said, it's four seconds for it to pull. And when it finds changes, of course it has to download them, it doesn't make any extra time to do that. So, and I do have a complete list of everything that's on the client at that point, including times so that I could send, instead of just the directories like I would send now. I could send the whole file, but I don't think their manager would use it. So right now, the, the, the code that I wrote, the code stuffed out to use that. So, um, but at that point, you have a mirror. Once you conclude successfully, it checks in and it's done. Um, so everything is pretty much there's no there's only one script you have to run. It's everything. So, and it does work pretty quickly in the product. So, like I said, you still have to download everything, but the mirrors aren't as hammered. So the downloads actually work pretty quickly. So plus the, it starts with downloads pretty quickly. Yes, yeah. so it doesn't have the three hours of yeah. waiting for the client. Well, it does still have to stat on the client once. Um, it has to stat everything to see what changes, but it only does it on the client, and the client side is the client's problem, the server side is everyone's problem. So if you say that, then you know, it saves a lot. It seems to work, and it's just a really long test. So that's a lot. It's a bigger quick for the lower mirror, which is okay. Um, but I'll, I'm going to announce it to the mirror list as soon as I get my changes pushed and debug on my vacation. So um, I guess everybody will see it then. Is it specific enough? How specific is it to the mirror up? Right now, it is very specific because it has encoded knowledge of what our modules are. And it has this concept of the buffet module that actually contains all the other modules. 